हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू माय चैनल आई एम सुदर्शन आई एम थर्ड ईयर एमबीबीएस स्टूडेंट एट बी डी लातूर एंड टुडेज टॉपिक इज स्केलेटल मसल रिलैक्सेंट्स दैट इज सक्सिनल कोलिन सो व्हाट आर द क्वेश्चंस दैट आर आस्क्ड आस्क्ड इन योर एग्जाम रिगार्डिंग स्केलेटल मसल रिलैक्सेंट्स दे विल आस्क यू द डेफिनेशन द क्लासिफिकेशन देन मैकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ डीपोलराइजिंग ब्लॉकर्स mechanism of action of uh, non depolarizing that is competitive blockers and they will ask you the uh, uses and adverse effects of succinyl choline so i will cover this topic in only two pages and uh, uh, i will uh, give you the tricks to remember this topic very easily so watch the video till the end and if you like this video do subscribe to my channel so let's start it uh, first of all definition guys the drugs that decrease the skeletal muscle tone by acting peripherally at the neuromuscular junction and centrally at the cerebrospinal axis are called as skeletal muscle relaxant so basically what they are doing they decrease the skeletal muscle uh, tone by acting peripherally and centrally then classification so first of all skeletal muscle relaxants it's uh, divided into two groups centrally acting and peripherally acting centrally acting uh, for uh, centrally acting drug the trick is bcg for me bcg vaccine hoti hai na to bcg for me so b for uh, benzodiazepines c for central uh, alpha 2 agonist and g for gaba mimetic and uh, me for mifensins so benzodiazepines you all know diazepam uh, then central alpha 2 agonist that is tizanidine gaba mimetic drugs baclofen and thiocolchicoside and mefensins that is chlorzoxazone and chlormizanone uh, you can remember this easily because uh, each drug has chlor next peripherally acting drugs uh, it is divided into two groups subgroups directly acting and neuromuscular blockers directly acting only two drugs are dantrolene and quinine and uh, neuromuscular blockers further subdivided into two groups depolarizing blockers and non depolarizing blockers depolarizing blockers are succinyl choline and decamethonium and non depolarizing blockers are also called as competitive blockers uh, they are uh, further divided into short acting intermediate acting and long acting in short acting uh, the only one drug is mevacurium intermediate acting atracurium and cisatracurium and long acting dituvocurarin and doxacurium so how to remember this each group that is short acting intermediate acting and long acting has one curium drug curium okay see guys you just need to remember this drug dituvocurarin which is most important drug you should remember this then next is mechanism of action of succinyl choline so succinyl choline binds to nm receptors at the neuromuscular junction then sodium channels open depolarization of muscle occurs there is initial twitching and fasciculation but after prolonged depolarization there is phase 1 block this is called as flaccid paralysis if continuous exposure to the succinyl choline is there then there is membrane desensitization and phase 2 block is uh, occur then uh, it cannot be reversed by the anticholinesterases therapy this is most important point it cannot be reversed by anticholinesterases therapy next point is mechanism of action of competitive blockers that is dituvocurarin so first of all um, dituvocurarin act as an antagonist and acetylcholine act as an agonist to the nm receptors dituvocurarin competitively blocks the action of acetylcholine at the nm receptor at the nm receptors at an uh, neuromuscular junction now we will see the adverse effect and therapeutic uses of skeletal muscle relaxants or succinyl choline first of all adverse effects so the trick to remember the adverse effect is misbah this was the pakistan's captain so m for muscle pain and soreness i for iop increases that is intraocular pressure increases sb for sinus bradycardia this is due to the vagal stimulation by succinyl choline or skeletal muscle relaxants then a from a there are two adverse effects first is aspiration of gastric contents and prolonged apnea h for hyperkalemia and malignant hyperthermia so hyperkalemia the fasciculation 
release the potassium into the blood so succinylcholine causes fasciculation uh, which releases potassium into the blood which leads to hyperkalemia and malignant hyperthermia when uh, it is used when succinylcholine or skeletal muscle relaxant is used with halothane in genetically susceptible individuals it causes malignant hyperthermia so now therapeutic uses of skeletal muscle relaxants or succinylcholine the trick to remember this is stceo why why this trick ceo because my favorite job is ceo chief executive officer so s for status epilepticus t for tetanus uh, when they are uh, used when they are not controlled by the other drugs succinylcholine or skeletal muscle relaxants are used in these cases then c for electroconvulsive therapy this c for convulsive so in this case succinylcholine is used to prevent trauma due to convulsions and e for endotracheal intubation and endoscopy these are short procedures surgical procedures so succinylcholine is used for short procedures as adjuvant to the general anesthesia or general anesthetics this is the most important use of skeletal muscle relaxants that they are used as an adjuvant to general anesthetics and the last use is o for orthopedic manipulations so thank you for watching if you like the, like this video do subscribe to my channel